If you're a fan of WWE and you go to dirt sheets to read up about the WWE, if you watch videos about the WWE, you watch WWE videos themselves on YouTube, you comment on WWE-related videos, you tweet about it, you post on Facebook about it, you're part of wrestling groups on Facebook, uh, you're a hardcore WWE fan. I'm a hardcore WWE fan. And there are certain truths about us. We are, beyond question, the most passionate and engaged loudest segment of the WWE's fan base. And there's no question that the WWE needs all of us as hardcore fans. We are the ones that are always there, through thick and thin. We are the bedrock. We are the constant. We are the ones that provide that base, that foundation that the WWE can build off of and can grow off of. We are the ones, by and large, that are subscribing to the WWE Network, which is so important to the company's fiscal future going forward. And we are also the most socially engaged crowd in terms of social media. We're the ones that tweet about this the most. We're the ones that post about this the most on Facebook. We're the ones that help spread the word the most about the WWE. So there's no question that we all play an important role for the WWE and that the WWE needs us. However, the WWE can't just focus on us. And there are many reasons why the WWE can't afford to just solely appeal to us or even frankly focus on us at all. While we're passionate and we're engaged and we're loyal and we're by far the loudest, we're nowhere near the majority of the audience. The majority of the audience are the most fickle of casual and mainstream fans. Those are the ones that represent the lion's share of the WWE fan base pie. And as a result, consequently, it only stands to reason that if they are by far the largest segment of the WWE fan base, with them comes the lion's share of the WWE's revenues. Why would you just focus on a group that, frankly, is always going to be there? Why would you devote 80% of your efforts to 20% of your audience and 20% of your efforts to 80% of your audience? That makes no sense whatsoever. If you think about it from a business or logical standpoint, you would think, if anything, you would need to devote 80% of your effort, energy, and resources to 80% of your audience and 20% of your effort, energy, and resources to 20% of your audience. We as hardcore WWE fans have built ourselves a kind of hardcore WWE fan bubble and tried to immerse ourselves and isolate ourselves from the real world WWE reality within that bubble. However, that doesn't change what the reality is. Yes, the WWE can't afford to completely ignore us, and yes, we are important to the WWE, but the fact of the matter is, no matter how much of an overinflated sense of self-worth we have, it doesn't change that we are not, by any stretch of the imagination, anywhere near to being the biggest, most important portion of the WWE's fan base. The WWE's primary job in this case is to figure out how to do just enough to shut us up to be able to go and do what they really need to do, which is appeal to the most fickle of all fans, the most important of all fans. Those are the casual and mainstream fans that by and large represent the lion's share of the WWE's fan base and by and large represent the largest portion of the WWE's incoming revenue. We are a loud, vocal minority. Approximately maybe 20% of the WWE's total audience. No matter how loud we get, it doesn't change the fact that our numbers are very small in the grand scheme of things. No matter how much we like to live in our own bubble and think that we know most, the truth of the matter is, is that we aren't that important and the WWE can't seek out to just focus on us. We are, once again, a loud, vocal minority that is part of the party, but has to be dealt with in a certain way to keep us on the outskirts of the party for the greater good. And you want to know what that makes us? That makes us, as hardcore WWE fans, the WWE's Tea Party. While not setting out to make an incredibly political video here, the simple fact of the matter is I'm using this for comparison's sake, and it's appropriate comparison. If the shoe fits, we must wear it, and we're rocking the hell out of these Jays, and that's just that simple. We are to the WWE 
what the Tea Party is to the GOP. The Tea Party is about 20% of the total Republican Party, just like we're about 20% of the total WWE fan base. The Tea Party is the most engaged, the most passionate, the most loyal, the loudest, just like we are to the WWE. The Tea Party is very important at the local and state levels in terms of winning elections, just like we as hardcore WWE fans can be very important to the company at the non-televised live events. However, that Tea Party can also be an incredible burden and hindrance at a national level, winning national elections, just like we can be an incredible hindrance and burden to the WWE when they are trying to reach out on a national level to casual and mainstream fans. The Tea Party is very narrow and frankly selfish in their scope of thought, just as we are a lot of times as hardcore WWE fans. The Tea Party thinks they know best, but more often than the case, they do not, just like we don't with the WWE. And most importantly of all, the Tea Party doesn't know what they want. They think they do, but they don't, just like we don't when it comes to the WWE. The simple fact of the matter is, no matter how much the Tea Party cranks up the volume and raises the level of which they speak, it doesn't change the fact that they are nothing more than a loud vocal minority. And the bigger the stage, the less significance and importance they carry, just like us for the WWE. So why can't the GOP afford to appeal more to the Tea Party? Why is the Tea Party an incredible hindrance to the GOP, in particular at the national level? Just look at some of the most popular names within the Tea Party movement. Some of the most important members of the Tea Party. Sarah Palin, Michelle Bachman, Mr. 999, Herman Cain, Ted Cruz, Captain Filibuster, Rush Limbaugh, Sean Hannity, Bill O'Reilly, Glenn Beck and Coulter, the Coulter guys for God's sakes, Michelle Malkin, Ted Nugent, great rocker, just a bit misunderstood, America. These are the pillars of the Tea Party movement. These are the biggest and best, brightest, most respected thinkers within the Tea Party movement. If these are the Tea Party's best minds, most popular names and biggest stars, what does it say about that movement? And how in the world could the GOP possibly afford to appeal to these knuckleheads any more than they absolutely positively had to? And how could appealing more to the Tea Party in any way, shape, or form be beneficial to the GOP on a national stage? Exactly. It would be a disaster. Just like appealing more to the hardcore WWE fans would be a complete and total disaster at the national level, like it kind of already has been. Just like with the Tea Party, the GOP can't afford to appeal to them. The WWE can't afford to just appeal to us and devote a lion's share of their attention and focus to pleasing us. Because if they did, it would be disastrous to the WWE, just like doing that uh, for the GOP would be disastrous. Plain and simple. Look at who hardcore fans think the WWE should push the most. People like Daniel Bryan and Dolph Ziggler and Cesaro, Tyson Kidd, Rollins, Ambrose, Neville, Sami Zayn, Hideo Itami, Bray Wyatt, Kevin Owens, Finn Balor. They'll think that these are the best, these are the brightest, these are the most talented guys. But the simple fact of the matter is, that's not a WWE roster of megastars. That's a goddamn indie fest. And no matter what type of isolationist bubble hardcore WWE fans have created for themselves and immersed themselves in trying to create an alternate reality, it doesn't change what the real reality is. Is that characters and personalities and storylines are what matter far more than in-ring action. In particular, because the largest portion of the WWE's fan base by a wide margin are the casual and mainstream fans that care more about characters, personalities, and storylines than they do in-ring action. Just because us as hardcore fans, we value in-ring action more, that doesn't make it the most important thing and doesn't mean that it should be the most important thing to the WWE. Characters, personalities, storylines... Those are the things that matter the most. And is it any coincidence that as the WWE's talents have gotten smaller, 
And as there has been less of an emphasis and a focus on characters, personalities, and storylines, that the WWE's business has shrunk as a direct result. No, that's not a coincidence. The WWE has already shown you in a way how appealing more to you is disastrous. It's been bad for their bottom line business for years, yet so many hardcore fans still believe foolishly that this is the way to go. Let's emphasize these guys that can go in the ring. These are the guys that are the best. These are the guys that are the most important. Oh, that's the fucking indie fed. This is the WWE. They have to appeal to those casual and mainstream fans. And giving you what you want means in a lot of ways that they have to ostracize those fickle, casual, and mainstream fans, which of course, since they're the largest portion of the WWE's fan base, what would that be? A fucking disaster! Is there any coincidence that the two biggest money-drawing periods in WWE history, the Hogan era and the Attitude era, featured bigger guys that were larger-than-life personalities, that had great characters, and they also told incredible stories? No. Because that's what appeals to the casual and mainstream fans. It's the Hogans, the Warriors, the Andres, the Savages, the Jake the Snakes, the DiBiases of the worlds that appeal to those people. Not the Dolph Zigglers or the freaking Tyson kids. It's the people of the Attitude Era, of the Stone Cold Steve Austin types, the Rocks, the Takers, the Canes, the Triple H's, the Mankinds of the worlds, the Big Shows of the worlds, the hell yeah, I guess you're throwing Chris Jericho. Those are the guys, the personalities, the characters, the larger-than-life figures that really stand out, that appeal to those casual mainstream fans. And you'll say, well, Chris Jericho most certainly wasn't a big guy. That's true. But he stood out more in a land of giants. Furthermore, he also was an incredible character and an incredible personality that could tell an incredible story. And the WWE told incredible stories with him. When the WWE has de-emphasized characters and personalities and storytelling and focus more on the smaller guys that could go in the ring, it's been bad for their business. Look at the mid-90s with guys like Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels. Those were the two bedrock figures. How was the business for the company then? When you look at the company now, yes, you could talk about Cena and Orton, and they're not even big, massive mega stars. They're not big, massive dudes. And they're most certainly not great characters, larger-than-life personalities that tell incredible stories, or the WWE goes out of their way to tell incredible stories with. But you've also got the guys like the Daniel Bryans and the CM Punks and the Dolph Zigglers. The wrestlers get smaller. The emphasis on characters gets smaller. The emphasis on personalities gets smaller. The emphasis on storytelling gets smaller. The focus on the in-ring action gets larger, and as a result, the business gets smaller. Again, appealing to the hardcore WWE fans solely and primarily spells disaster for the WWE. It has in the past. It is now. And will continue to be that way no matter how much the WWE hardcore fans want to immerse themselves in an isolationist bubble and live in an alternate reality. A perfect example of the disconnect of hardcore WWE fans from the WWE's important reality to me is the Great Khali. Most of us as hardcore fans always thought that Great Khali sucked. Kind of did. I mean, he was big, yes, but he couldn't move, he couldn't talk, and he most certainly couldn't wrestle. So most of us didn't like him. We always resented when he would get pushed. We thought it was stupid. Why are you wasting television time on this waste of space? However, he was the type of performer that appeals to casual and mainstream fans. He's a big dude when he's a monster. He's a bad guy. He's a big fucking monster. You take notice of a guy like the great Kali. And when he's a good guy and he's laughing and joking, casual mainstream fans really get behind that. They really like that. So he's the type of character that appealed to a larger domestic audience, and most importantly of all, he was a huge star from the second most populous country in the world in India with over a billion residents. So it's very simple to see from a business standpoint why the hell you would devote television time and effort and push to somebody like a great Kali because he can provide you a lot of big mainstream bang for your buck, both domestically and most especially internationally. 
But hardcore WWE fans can't understand that and can't get behind that. So let's take the hardcore WWE fan philosophy and apply it to the Tea Party and the GOP. And let's say somehow, some way, that Sarah Palin was the Republican nominee for president in 2016. Here's what would happen. 20% of the GOP, the GOP who represents perhaps 35 to 40% of total registered voters, would be all ecstatic, think this is greatest thing ever, head over heels in love with Sarah Palin. She would get some other Republicans into her camp because, if anything else, that means that uh, she's not a Democrat, basically. But she would struggle to appeal to most of the rest of the GOP. She would most certainly struggle uh, to get the GOP establishment behind her, and most especially would be too radical and too far one direction to appeal to the most important voters in a national presidential race every year. Those are the moderates and the independents. They don't matter so much on the local and state level every year or two years, but every four years at the national level, they make all the difference in the world. It's all about those moderates. It's all about those independents. And nominating somebody like Sarah Palin would please a segment of the GOP, but would prove to be a complete and total disaster because what she believes in would not appeal to those moderates and independents. And you throw her up against somebody like a Hillary Clinton, let's say, who could potentially appeal to those independents and moderates. What would happen? Sarah Palin would get slaughtered. The Tea Party would have their girl get embarrassed on the national stage. And that's what would happen. If you took that WWE hardcore fan philosophy and followed the 24-7, 365 and made that your bedrock of business, the WWE would get slaughtered, just like the GOP in 2016 would get slaughtered if they appealed solely to that hardcore base of the Tea Party and they nominated somebody like Sarah Palin because they would take their shift and focus away from the casual voters, the mainstream voters, those moderates, those independents that make all the difference. Well, in the WWE, it's the same thing. It's not the hardcores that make all the difference. It's the casual and the mainstream and the moderate wrestling fans, if you will, that are the most important and the ones that have to be appealed to on a consistent basis. The truth of the matter is WWE is a business. And politics is a business, too. And sometimes in business, you have to risk angering your loyal customers for your greater good. The most important customer is not the one you already have. It's that next one that you're trying to get. It's a simple, inconvenient truth that a lot of us don't understand, but it's a reality of the business world. The focus is on growth. If you're not growing, you're dying in the business world. It's why the GOP as a brand is slowly dying because they haven't grown their coalition. They haven't grown their reach. It's actually narrowed in its scope and its vision. And that's why in the last two national presidential elections, they've got slaughtered. And if nothing changes, it will continue to happen by even greater margins. Now, don't get me wrong. The WWE needs us to survive, just like the GOP needs the Tea Party to survive. You need any numbers in your favor that you possibly can have. And those loyal customers are important because they're the bedrocks. They're the foundation of everything that you do. And without them, you just couldn't survive. However, the WWE, just like the GOP, must appeal to a broader base. They must focus on casual and mainstream viewers more so than the hardcore viewers. It's that simple. The WWE can't afford to just appeal to us. Just like the GOP can't just afford to appeal to the Tea Party. Because if they do, it will be a disaster. Because that's exactly who we are as hardcore WWE fans. We are the WWE's Tea Party.